Hi there, it's Caroline. We're very welcome to my video. So today I'm going to show you how to do a open cup pour, which is really my favourite. And I'm actually using an old Christmas turkey foil baster oven thingy that I got for 20p in uh, the local supermarket. And it was quite good at catching all the drips and things. So I've got a 20 by 20, my usual size of canvas. This is a deep edge one. And I'm putting a base coat of titanium white. So all the paint is mixed with two parts uh, medium, the Floetrol and then a little water just to get it to the consistency of a small mound. I haven't added any silicone or anything, it's just the Floetrol and the water. So this is a little, uh, just a cardboard cup that I've cut the top off just to make a little circle where I'm going to pour the paint. So first of all I pour a little bit of extra base coat just round the edge just to give it an extra pillow uh, to ooze out on. And that's what the paint does in this technique, it just oozes out the bottom. And I find by layering this gold here some gold, titanium white, and then more gold on top. It sort of seemed to create some really lovely cells. So this is a painting that my niece asked me specially for, and she's chosen all the colours for her room. I've actually did, did three, all using the same colours. Uh, and it's amazing just how different they all are. They all turned out. So just continue layering the paint and when you're happy that things are starting to happen, little cells coming out the bottom, just lift it up and swirl it round. You don't want too much paint on there because it, you don't want a thick layer because it does tend to crack. I just put a bit of splatter with some of the dark grey paint. I've got some uh, gold and silver, a sort of dusky pink, which I mix some pink and a little bit of raw umber in to get that shade. And all requested by Lara. And they did it really turn out well. So this is, I love this technique because the it certainly does make really interesting effects on your canvas. So let the paint, now you don't want to lose any of those lovely cells, so have a think before you start pouring off. You know, find a bit that maybe you're not so fond of and uh, get rid of that bit. I'm just loving all those cells. I don't want to get rid of any of those bits. Make sure the sides are all covered. I'm just giving you a bit of a close up there. And I will have torched it as well to get rid of any air bubbles. So I was very pleased. And this is the dried piece. So uh, you, you can absolutely leave it like this. It's um, very durable. It's uh, acrylic, dries a bit like it's like plastic. It's very easy to wipe clean. So it's up to you how you finish it off. I wanted to do uh, some frames for these. To, uh, so I'm going to show you how I went about that. So I find some pine strip wood in a local DIY store. Um, the one I used was that one at the top, the 12 by 34 by uh, 240. That was the 12 is the piece that you're going to see um, along the face of the picture and the 34 is the depth. So the, that measurement will depend on what size of canvas you use, if you just use a normal uh, depth of canvas or if you use a deep edge one like I did. 
Now you can't speak to someone you know that has uh, one of these fancy drills like my brother-in-law who uh, very kindly offered to cut my mitres for me for this painting which for, was for his daughter so you know how could he refuse but it's very um, it's very heavy duty and to be honest it did sort of splinter the wood a little bit a far better option and it's, this is what I did a little one with is a mitre box and saw which I bought for I think $9.99 now definitely it needs a bit more elbow grease for this but I did a, a smaller canvas and it worked out just fine so definitely it's a job that you want to do outside you want to wear your mask so that you're not inhaling any of that dust and this, uh, the saw that came with the mitre box actually uh, was perfect because the wood is quite thin, you know, so you want a saw that's got loads of um, teeth. So that, that was really, that's my little frame, the frame that I did. This is the one that we did on the big machine of my brother-in-law's and that was the first four pieces. So uh, I did four pieces. Uh, mitre joints, uh, measured the painting, made sure uh, it fitted. Really the easiest way is to work it all out in a piece of paper and just cut out the bits of paper. Make sure you want to leave a little gap of about half a centimetre on each side of the frame because the frame is a floating frame so it's not right up against your painting. So I'll show you the actual finished frame that I did. I painted it a dark grey and I put two little slats just across just to set the painting in which actually saved me a bit of time because the one that I, the very first one I did as a trial with my little mitre box, I cut four extra mitres and set them in really to set the canvas on but the canvas sits on these two sort of stretcher bar things absolutely fine and that just saved me cutting another four mitre joints it was just two straight pieces for each canvas and I used Gorilla Glue to stick it with which is fantastic so uh, this is the little frame that my, this was my first one that I tried and I made the extra four mitres just to, for the picture to, to sit on but really that was a bit surplus to requirements. Um, the two slats just across were, were absolutely fine and you can position them either in the middle or at the top and bottom of the frame. And I think it's actually better to paint after you've assembled everything and glued it. So one of the other things that you can do with your finished painting is you can varnish it. Now, the varnishes that they recommend for acrylic paint are these polymer uh, varnishes. You can get these from any art supply store and they, you can mix them with water. So if you're adding it to, with a paintbrush, it's four parts varnish to one part water. So I was just making up a small amount because I tend to always make up far too much. This comes in a matte, a satin and a gloss finish. So the one I'm using on this painting is the gloss finish. And that's just a little um, Taclon brush. You can get those in any uh, paint shops, just a craft store, really soft bristles, nice for applying the varnish. So I'll just speed it up a bit here, it's a pretty quick process. I tend to put um, two or three coats of varnish on, um, just depends on how much of a shine you want. Certainly it does bring out the vibrant colours of your painting. Makes it look like the paint's wet again. Now 
Right now this one is uh, I did with resin so you obviously need your protective gear. I've got a, um, a mask that I got on Amazon. And this is my resin which is from Resin 8 and it's a special resin for coating. It's mixed up one to one and it's handy to have the isopropyl alcohol for cleaning. Now, make sure your painting is totally straight because you want the resin to slide off. And before you put any resin on, make sure your painting hasn't got any dust or, you know, bits and bobs of floating around, landing on it. So I've got my mask on, my protective gloves, and I'm just weighing out the resin. So you warm the part A up in a little bit of warm water beforehand and it sort of helps with not to have so many bubbles. Now I was a bit naughty here in that I mixed the two in the one container. They, they recommend that you mix part A and part B in separate containers and then combine them. So you stir for two to three minutes. So um, yeah there you go, speeded that up. Have a drink of coffee. So basically, this was my first time doing this, so I'm just plonking the resin on and I sort of guessed roughly how much I was using, but you can go online and there is a resin calculator if you just check, um, you know, put in the size of your canvas and it'll tell you how much resin to make up. I think it recommended six ounces for this 8x8 eight eight inch size and I made a little bit extra so it's really good to have something to use like a little mould or something uh, that you can put any leftover resin that you might have create something else while you're at it because resin is expensive and you certainly don't want to be wasting any so I just made sure that uh, there wasn't too much on the top and I covered the sides. It's a really sticky process this so make sure that you have your gloves. That silicone mat, the black mat I have, it was fantastic. The silicone just dries and you can peel it off. So there's a few little things I made up there with the extra resin I had left over. You know, May as well. If you're feeling creative, go all out. A little shamrock. <laughs> and then use your cake covering so that nothing lands on it when you've got your resin. <laughs> Uh, excuse my messy table. Now I'm just showing you this painting because I put a satin, the satin finish on this but really it just, it was actually really nice. It's not uh, not glossy at all. Um, I liked it. It was just like velvet really. Uh, this is the the gloss shiny one and it did sort of accentuate you know the uh, canvas the marks of the canvas which you could see and shining but the colours are really vibrant with the gloss with the varnish and you don't really need that much and I put three layers on that and then this is my finished piece with the resin I'm trying to show you it's all Sort of reflecting in the light at the minute there but it dried like really well nearly like a sheet of glass over the top you can sort of see it there it was, yeah I was really happy with it and the frame as well the painting sort of pokes out a little bit which I like and there I put the two uh, pieces just on either the top and the bottom and the you just can glue the, the picture in on top then. 
which is what I'm going to do. So I was very pleased with, with how it turned out. It's good sometimes to keep an eye out for when resin's on offer. They had a 20% offer, the company, so I quickly ordered some more. So I hope, Larry, that you will like these. And they'll look well up on your wall. I just thought I would go and find the other two to let you see what they look like. So they were just done exactly the same way with the same colours of paint which I'll put down in the description box. I'll put uh, details of everything that I used. Thanks so much for joining me today and I hope that you find it informative. These are just the little, my little bits and pieces that I, I made of the leftover resin and the little moulds. They can get all different shapes and sizes. A bit of glitter, you know, a bit of bling. There, I'm obviously... Thanks so much again. See you soon. Bye.